Today's video is going to be kind of funny. The best Chicago style pizza. Where's the cheese? It's under the sauce. There's no cheese on it. It's under the sauce. Like, I'm Italian and this is hurting me. It's from Chicago. But it's just sauce. The cheese is under the sauce. That's not enough cheese. The cheese is under the sauce. It's not enough. It's under the sauce. Nowadays on TikTok and Instagram, everybody is a professional artist. It doesn't matter if you've been drawing for 10 years or 30 years, or you just started drawing yesterday after coming out of your mother's womb. And hey, what do professional artists do that other people don't? They share art advice for everybody else to learn from. <laughs> So the art account we're going to be visiting today is called Art Hub Tips. And they have 66,000 followers, but their main page has almost 200,000 followers. And then they also have a free app that apparently every artist needs. I don't know what it is. And right now, I don't think I want to find out. This is gonna go by quick, so feel free to pause it. To start off, you've got your ribcage, your hips, and your head. I normally use a trapezoid, a triangle shape, and a circle. I draw a guideline down the middle to help me decide what direction it's going in two parallel lines to that on the sides, as well as four circles for the joint. The neck is also two lines along with two triangles for the collarbone guide. The collarbone is just two V's that interlock, and once you have this, we'll be ready to start on the legs. Next, you're gonna wanna measure from the top of the head to the bottom of the hips and double that. Once you double this, you'll have the length of your legs and you can mark a spot halfway through for the knees. For the arms, the elbow should line up with the waist. The wrists will line up at the halfway mark and the hands should be about the same size as the head. For the thighs and calves, a lot of the time one side will be straight and the other side will be curved. This also applies when drawing legs from the side. The curves will also be more or less prominent depending on what type of body you're drawing. That was a really long process. Yes, it could work, especially if you are trying to nail your proportions, right? But I feel like there's a way to make it better without having to draw all the skeletons and tiny little shapes and then ending up literally taking them all away. And I also think your hands are a little bit too long for the body unless that's part of your art style i guess but the hands sometimes don't really get all the way up to the knees they just stop somewhere close to the upper thighs i think an easier and faster way to draw and nail your proportions every time is to just think about the shapes when you draw and then use the measurements between each of them to just compare and contrast and find out which one is just looking too long or out of place Kind of similar to what TB Choi does, especially when she's drawing characters. You can always just feel when she's exaggerating a particular character or making some limbs longer and it just doesn't look out of place or unproportional with the other parts of the body because there are also other parts of the body that are symmetrical as well. So you want to know how I draw my fashion doll figures? Well, I always start with the head. Then I draw two lines pointing in opposite directions representing the shoulders and the hips, and connect them with the spine. Now this is the most important part. On the highest hip you draw your legs straight down. That's because this is the leg supporting most of the weight of your figure. Then on the lower hip you can draw the leg pointing in almost any direction that you want. Once you have your basic skeleton down, you can fill in the fat and draw your arms. You can make the figures as thick or as thin as you want. These are the proportions that I tend to use, but this technique can be applied to any body type. Let me know if you'd like a part two. Wow. Finally, some good advice. A round of applause to this person. A round of applause to this person. This is the first time I'm actually seeing tangible, reasonable, and valuable advice on Instagram or TikTok that you can actually follow from beginning to end, and it will just make your drawings better. So every time you're drawing figures or characters and you have to make them make up cool pose, the first thing to always think about is the direction of the shoulders and the direction of the hips. You don't want them to be close together or moving in the same direction. You always want to have them going in opposite directions. That just makes the pose much more dynamic and interesting. Figuring out how your legs go, especially for female characters, all just comes down to where your hips are facing and then how you position the legs after that. So this advice is solid gold. I 
kind of liked how the eyes looked before you added all those specular highlights. Now don't get me wrong, obviously eyes reflect a lot of light because they're re a reflective surface, right? So yes, if there is a bright light or a different bright lights in wherever your character is, you're going to have multiple reflections in the eye. Some of those reflections might affect the skin as well. I'm sure you didn't know that. So if you have a ton of lights in the eyes, but the skin just looks like it's being lit from just one light source coming from far off left, the drawing is going to look kind of funny. Yes, your eyes might look nice, but it's not going to look like everything is being lit by the same light source. So you just need to keep that in mind whenever you want to use glossy eyes or shiny eyes or have multiple lights in your eyes. It's just hair, my guy. You don't have to solve all these mathematical equations and draw all these construction lines like you're trying to draw perspective from a weird angle. It's just hair. You can literally draw the shape of the hair and fill it in without taking so much time. Man, I don't know why people like making simple things so dramatic. So it just looks like it's an entire difficult process that not everyone can grasp when it's literally simple and so easy to follow and unless you're trying to make a hyper realistic drawing or a portrait or just a really super detailed drawing or painting of hair i don't think you can just use this as a way to keep on drawing hair in every little drawing that you make. Obviously, you're going to want to simplify the hairstyles or how the hair looks in some of your drawings unless you're trying to just focus on a tiny batch of hair, like a tiny patch of hair in your drawing or your work and really make that super, super detailed. If not, this is just kind of pointless. You ever do a sketch and you're like, this looks really good, and then you add line art and it just... <laughs> Today we're talking about line art weight. Sketching captures loose movement, and we want to reflect that in our line art. The weight of a line is dictated by how much pressure you're putting on your pen. When you're doing line art, ask yourself these questions. Where is the light and where is your drawing in comparison? What's in the shadow? Where do your lines intersect? And where is the gravity? In this example, I'm going to add more weight to the lines that are in the shadow, like underneath the leg here, and I'll add thinner lines to where the light's hitting. In terms of gravity, this cloth is being pulled down, so I'm going to thicken the lines that probably have the most weight. There's also going to be natural shadow where lines intersect, so you can thicken those. I know it sounds lame, but this is not easy, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Okay, this is also good advice, especially for people who draw comic books and just, um illustrations like patrick brown line weight is super important so if your style is heavily dependent on just pencils and just line drawing you have to really think about line weight wherever your the drawing the whatever you're drawing the character or background or whatever it is wherever the shadow is that is where you should have the thicker lines and where the light is hitting is going to have lighter lines this just signifies light and shadow just in line width and if you don't understand how to do this you can just take a look at a lot of comic book artists but someone i really enjoy how he uses line width in his work 
I don't know if he's, I, I think he still does it now, but his really old work was Patrick Brown. He just knew exactly how to use line weight and you could just tell where the light source was coming from just by looking at the pencils, which is something you should want to take a look at and observe if you're trying to improve the line weights in your work. Oh, look who controls all the islands. It's the Mahajapit, Majahapit, Mapajahit, Mahapajit, Mapajahit, Majapahit. Holy, it's, if this isn't relatable, I have no idea what is. You see how you draw one eye and then that eye just looks perfect. It's the best eye you have ever drawn. And then you're trying to draw the other eye. It just doesn't work. It never works. That is so me. That is me every single time. Right now it's become better since I kind of understand what I'm doing. But when I was learning and just struggling to understand drawing, it just kept on happening. And I'll just duplicate the eye I drew first and just put it on the other side and call it a day. I mean, hell, who's going to know that's what I did. How to draw locks in under 15 seconds. First, section the hair off like normal. Then add hair to the side of the head. I chose a fade option, so just lower the opacity. Then add boxes where the locks come out of the head. Then I use my lock brush. Then draw the locks coming out the head like normal. Experiment with different styles until you find one you like. Good luck! This is actually cool advice. If you have the lock brush, what about us who don't have that brush? How, how do we do it? Do we um draw the strands by themselves? Or do we make our own brush? a neat trick i guess you could just do this by just painting and using the right colors but maybe this trick can solve all that probably anyway those are all the art tips we could get from today's professional art teachers and um let me know what you guys think did you learn anything from any of these tips or are half of them just pointless and cannot be used in actual drawing scenarios let me know what you think in the comments if you have any video ideas you want me to talk about you can just send me a dm on twitter or instagram the links to my socials are in the descriptions and you can also just leave a comment with what you think or any video idea you want in the comment section and leave the video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you're new here and i will see you in the next video peace what are you still waiting for? Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If this is the first time you're seeing my face, subscribe. Don't you like the videos? What, the videos are not good enough for you? You prefer another YouTuber? Right, I get it. But subscribe. And maybe you'll find a video that you like and enjoy. Okay, bye. I'm, 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 I'm just kidding. Bye, bye, bye. Subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. Bye. I'll see. I'll see you next next week. Peace.